hear that, those are footsteps. The footsteps of the most sinister man to ever walk this earth. And if you observe closely, if you listen carefully, if you diligently study the word of God, you will see the signs. The Antichrist is coming. The foundations are being laid in this world, and it's only a matter of time before he is revealed. The Bible tells us in Daniel 7.25 that he will speak against the Most High, oppress his holy people, and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times, and half a time. The Antichrist will literally oppose Jesus Christ in every way. If you find it difficult to be a Christian now, the persecution that Christians will see when the Antichrist is in power will be unimaginable. Now, I want to read a few verses, and then we can analyze their meaning. We are living in a crucial moment in the world where an ideological shift is in full swing. But what lies behind these transformations? How does the old system struggle to maintain its power? Today, I want to share some reflections in this video exposing how old tactics are still employed. What direction is the world taking and why should we be vigilant about what is to come? It's time to stay grounded and strengthen our connection with the Lord, for He will have the final word and establish definitive order on this planet. We are witnessing a transition that could lead to the great deceptions prophesied, as seen in the prophecies of Revelation, including the issue of the mark of the beast and the rise of the Antichrist. People are being pressured to follow a desperate path, clamoring for measures that are being implemented. I hope you understand the depth of this content and watch until the end to have a clear understanding of what is to come. Revelation 13 One begins by saying that the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. The dragon is Satan himself. And we know this because in Revelation 22, the Bible clearly states that he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. So, returning to Revelation 13, the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and a beast came out of the sea. It is widely believed that this beast, according to many Bible scholars, is the Antichrist, and here's why. As I read through chapter 13, I want you to listen to the power and ability granted to this beast. I won't focus so much on the symbolism described in the chapter, but I want us to focus on what the Bible says this beast will do in the world. Verses 4 to 10 say that people worship the dragon because he had given authority to the beast, and they also worship the beast, asking, Who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Therefore, here is what we can understand from this passage. There will be people in this world who will worship and idolize the Antichrist because he will suffer what the Bible calls a fatal wound. Many speculate it will be an assassination attempt, but whatever it is, it will appear fatal. Yet somehow, the Antichrist will be healed, leading many to marvel and follow him. The Antichrist will openly blaspheme against God, speak openly against Jesus Christ, and seek to insult the name of the Lord. Consider this. The Antichrist will be Satan himself, but in human form. He may start as a politician, scholar, wealthy businessman. Whatever his origin, his agenda will be clear, and his stance will be clear. He will oppose the gospel of Jesus Christ and seek to be worshipped himself. Now he will receive power and authority over the earth for 42 months, which is three and a half years, and during that time 
He will have power over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Think about it for a moment. If you have power over every tribe, people, language, and nation, you must be in a position of global authority, in a position of complete influence and dominion. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly how this power will manifest, whether through sheer military force, some kind of political strategy, or simply through dark forces. However it happens, the Antichrist will have immense evil influence over this world. When the Antichrist comes to power and deceives the masses, he will force people to receive a mark on their right hand or forehead in order to buy or sell anything. This mark will signify allegiance to the Antichrist. Those who refuse to accept it will be unable to participate or function in society. Imagine a world where you cannot buy a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk without the mark of the beast. Imagine being completely excluded from society and forced to live off the land just to survive. Furthermore, Christianity will be illegal and believers will face persecution and even death for their faith. The pressure to bow before the Antichrist will be intense and families will be divided as their loved ones accept the mark and turn away from God. Just listen to how the Bible describes the events that will occur on that day and hour. Revelation 13, 14, 17 says that he deceived the inhabitants of the earth with the signs he was given to perform in front of the beast telling them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark which is the name of the beast, or the number of its name. To help you understand these signs more quickly and easily, we are facing difficult times when prophecies are being fulfilled, but many do not realize what is happening around the world. For this reason, I have decided to offer a gift to all channel subscribers, a digital ebook, The Secret Behind the Holy Bible, which you can download immediately. The link is in the first pinned comment. In this book, I reveal all the secrets of biblical prophecies that will shock you. Don't waste time. Click on the first pinned comment because we have only a few units available and it will soon be taken down. Imagine a world where you cannot openly pray or worship God, fearing discovery and punishment, where you have to hide your faith and beliefs and don't know whom to trust. Moreover, the fact that everyone small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, will need a mark to buy and sell means there will be some kind of global currency controlled by the Antichrist. All financial transactions will be monitored and controlled, and those who refuse to conform will be unable to participate in society. Although the Antichrist has not yet been revealed, he is already at work. The Bible tells us that the spirit of the Antichrist is already working through many false prophets and ministries that seem good and sound good. The pastors seem right, and the church buildings are grand, but the gospel they preach is empty, without conviction, repentance, or the Holy Spirit. To better understand false prophets, consider the analogy of wolves in sheep's clothing. According to zoologists and wildlife biologists, Wolves are opportunistic predators that attack weak, sick, or young sheep because they are easier to capture and kill, causing great economic losses to sheep farmers. Three things to note. Wolves are opportunistic predators. They attack the vulnerable and cause losses. It's interesting to note that in Matthew 7, 15, we are warned about false prophets who come disguised as sheep, but inwardly are devouring wolves. As children of God, we must be vigilant against false prophets who appear good and righteous, but are deceivers. These false prophets have three characteristics. They are opportunistic predators. They are opportunistic predators. They attack the vulnerable, and they bring destruction and loss. 
The Bible tells us that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came so that we may have life and have it abundantly. Where there is the Antichrist, there is destruction. He comes to steal people's peace and life, joy and steal people's time to distract them. With everything but God's things and false prophets employ the same strategy. So you may wonder what I should do exactly to ensure that we are never deceived by false prophets. How can I stay protected against wolves in sheep's clothing? Well, the only true way to recognize deception for what it is is to know the pure truth. And who is that? Jesus himself said in John 14:6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Anyone who says otherwise is contradicting the Bible and spreading deceit. Revelation 13, 16. 17 also tells us that he will force all people, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that no one can buy or sell unless they have the mark, which is the name of the beast, or the number of its name. Five things you need to know about the mark of the beast. First, allegiance. When the Antichrist is revealed to the world, he will impose a system, a law where you will need to take some kind of mark to participate in society. There is a train of thought that suggests that to truly understand what the mark is and what it means, it is necessary to look back in history. It is believed that at some point, Rome ordered all its citizens to swear allegiance to it and this would be political and also religious allegiance. By swearing allegiance, you accepted and submitted to Roman law, including the religious laws of the time. By swearing allegiance, it meant that you were declaring your loyalty to Rome. Now, with this thinking, the mark of the beast will be a case of people swearing allegiance to the Antichrist. People will take the mark of the beast because, at that moment, it is likely to be imposed by law. Although the message is that you need the mark to buy or sell, in reality you will be swearing allegiance to the Antichrist. Second, the form of the mark. No one knows exactly what form the mark of the beast will come in. However, many speculate it could be in the form of a small, digital chip or something called a radio frequency identification tag. Both options can be easily implanted under the skin. Revelation 13, 16, 17 says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This passage indicates that the Antichrist will establish some kind of global economic system. Third, persecution of Christians. It is warned that difficult times will come when the Antichrist takes power. He will give two options, worship him or lose your life. Revelation 13.15 says, And it was given unto him to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. If you do not worship the beast, according to the Bible, you will lose your life. So, effectively, Christianity will be illegal. Any believer or anyone who refuses to bow down before the Antichrist will face persecution. Fear and anguish will reign in families as loved ones choose to take the mark and turn away from God. And think about this. If you take the mark, you will lose your soul, essentially rejecting God. But if you do not take the mark, you will be followed, unable to buy or sell. Imagine the difficult situation some believers will be in. For some, this will mean they will not be able to put food on the table for their families. Symbolically, it represents the holy and pure power that Jesus has to overcome evil with good. When Jesus returns, he will not be alone. He will have the armies of heaven with him, composed of angels led by the archangel Michael. When he first came to earth, it was as the Lamb of God, sacrificing himself on the cross to save us. However, when he returns, he will come as the King of kings and Lord of lords. When Jesus returns, 
He will crush the Antichrist and all his followers, crushing every demonic spirit and everything that opposes him. The Bible tells us in Revelation 19, 19, 21, And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. One of the ways the Antichrist will exercise control is through the establishment of a world religion. The world will be deceived and, in some cases, forced to bow down and worship the Antichrist as if he were a savior. Additionally, the scriptures indicate that the Antichrist will establish a global monetary system. This system will impose its authority over everyone, rich and poor, great and small, regardless of their social status or wealth. It will require a mark on the right hand or forehead, without which no one will be able to buy or sell. This mark will be a symbol of loyalty to the reign of the Antichrist, a sign of submission to his authority. This is a serious reflection. The monetary system represents the Antichrist's desire to control every aspect of human life, including our basic needs. But let us be encouraged because God has warned us about these events in advance. He has given us His Word to equip us with discernment and wisdom. The Word of God tells us this so that we may always be found living in the truth that is in the Bible. For when we know the truth, the truth and the light that are in the Word of God, we cannot be deceived by the Antichrist or by the spirit of the Antichrist, which according to the Bible is already at work in this world today. Before continuing the video, an important message. Don't forget to get your copy of our book. It's in the first pinned comment of this video. Therefore, we must remain steadfast in our faith, refusing to compromise our devotion to Christ, even if it means facing difficulties and persecution. We need to be vigilant and discerning. 1. John 4, 3, 4 says, But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now, is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The spirit of the Antichrist is already present in this world. It is a spirit that lies and deceives. Therefore, we see that in today's days the world calls good evil and evil good. This is the spirit of the Antichrist in operation. But let me remind you that we have the truth on our side. By clinging to the one who gave his life for our salvation, by immersing ourselves in his word and prayer, we will be strengthened against the deceptions of the Antichrist. Let us remain faithful until the end, knowing that our final victory is only in Christ. The Bible calls us to wake up. The Lord wants us to wake up to the fact that there is a heaven and a hell. There is a day of judgment. If someone is driving along the road and falls asleep or their attention wanders, they could miss some road signs indicating where to go. Well, God has given His children many signs to stay alert. The Word of God is full of signs to inform us that time is running out. This world will not last forever. And that's good news. I don't know about you, but heaven, from what I've read about it, seems like a better place. No more tears, no more sadness, only joy, only peace. Oh, to be in the presence of the Lord forever, away from the sickness and devastation of this world, done with natural disasters and devastation. Hebrews 3, 12 says, Take care, brothers lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. This is a serious warning because Paul tells us that we must ensure that none of us has an evil and unbelieving heart, a heart that refuses to trust and depend on the Lord, a heart 
that turns away from the living God. And let me show you why unbelief is so paralyzing for a Christian. In Matthew 13, when Jesus came to his own town, he began teaching in the synagogue. Verse 58 says, And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Think about it. Jesus did not perform miracles there because of their unbelief. Jesus did not do any mighty work because of their unbelief. My friends, see why Paul warns us against having an unbelieving heart. When you have a heart full of unbelief, you are denying the power of God. You are denying the glory of God. You are denying the Lord of all that is. So be careful, people of God. Make sure none of you has a sinful and unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Now, for this next warning, I need to provide a bit of context. The children of Israel were liberated from slavery and servitude. They saw incredible miracles of God. They saw the Red Sea parted. They saw the Lord going ahead of them by day in a pillar of cloud to guide the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. They were fed with manna from heaven. But despite seeing the mighty hand of God, the children of Israel rebelled, murmured, and complained against God. Thus, Paul warns us in the New Testament, in Hebrews 3.15, 17, as it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for forty years. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. The warning here is that we should not harden our hearts. Do not be cold and insensitive to the voice of God. Amidst all the chaos and confusion of this world, the voice of God continues to be present. The Spirit of the Lord calls us, is touching our hearts. A hardened heart means insensitivity to the beauty and glory of God. It means following our own desires instead of God's things. But, thanks to His mercy, God offers us a change of heart. God can change our hearts. The third warning I believe we must be aware of is in Hebrews 2, 1, which says, Therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. Now I believe the Amplified Translation explains this verse better by saying, For this reason we must pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that we have heard, so that we do not drift away from them. In essence, what the Bible is telling us here is that we must be careful not to drift away from the truth, which is Jesus Christ. We must be careful not to stray from the truth of the gospel, because in this world we will encounter people who will offer their diluted version of the gospel, people who will preach a gospel that does not require repentance, commitment, or self-denial, but a gospel that will please the ears. That will seem good and make you feel good, but will not have the power to transform or challenge you. That is what we must be careful of, not drifting away from the truth of the gospel, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't forget to download our book, The Secret Behind Bible Prophecies. We've already sold over 500,000 copies, and we're down to the last few units, so don't waste time and take advantage. I guarantee you will gain a lot of knowledge after reading this sensational book made with great care and love for all subscribers of our channel, fully based on the Holy Bible. The link is in the first pinned comment. If you have been impacted by these deep reflections on future events and the importance of standing firm in faith, be sure to subscribe to the channel to continue receiving content that explores crucial themes of spiritual and prophetic life. By subscribing, you will be connecting to a community that values the truth of the Word of God and seeks to understand the signs of the times. On this channel, we aim not only to inform, but also to build and strengthen your faith. Here, you will find detailed analyses of scriptures, clear explanations of Bible prophecies, and a Christ-centered approach to understanding what is happening in the world around us. Furthermore, by subscribing, you will receive notifications whenever a new video is posted 
ensuring you do not miss any relevant content for your spiritual journey. We believe spiritual preparation is crucial today, and this channel is a valuable resource for those who wish to delve deeper into the knowledge of the Word and be prepared for the challenges that may arise. So don't waste time. Subscribe now, activate notifications, and join us on this journey of discovery and spiritual growth. Click the subscribe button below and become part of this community that seeks to live according to God's will and prepare for the times ahead. We look forward to having you with us.